What is up guys, TEJ here, and in today's video, we have a very exciting one for you guys. We are going to be putting the generational Tor AD DI driver shaft up against the more modern, lower launch, lower spinning offerings from Graphite Design, the Tor AD XC, and newly released Tor AD VF. It's gonna be a very fun video, I'm excited. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, so really quickly before we get into testing, I just want to kind of cover graphite design, what's going on, these shafts, and our testing for today. So graphite design is a graphite shaft manufacturer out of Japan, and they've been making shafts for quite a long time. And within all the shafts that they make, there is a family called the Tor AD family, AD standing for accuracy and distance, and that is arguably the most popular family in the North American market. And within the Tor AD family, there is one specific shaft, the Tor AD. D DI that has been popular for over 10 years now. It's actually been in the bags of guys like Tiger Woods. Hideki Matsuyama still uses them in driver three wood and five wood. John Rahm, Adam Scott, you name it, they've probably at least tested a Tor ADDI. It's the bright orange shaft that you see on TV a lot. Now, this Tor ADDI is based off of the blueboard style profile, meaning that this has a stiffer handle section into a softer middle and then into a stiffer tip section. Now, the softer middle gives you a little bit of kick and feel the stiffer tip kind of helps keep launch and spin in a manageable window and the blue board style golf shaft has been popular for quite some time but with that being said and as time has gone on players have gotten faster they've gotten more aggressive and so companies have had to introduce new parts now with graphite design they've introduced shafts like the tour adgp and tour adxc the one we're going to be testing today that are supposed to be a little bit more lower launching and spinning within the tour ad family but as a whole they still retain the very similar di blueboard style profile that graphite design is really known for and if you look at the majority of tour ad shafts they all resemble that blueboard style profile even the lower launching and spinning ones they just have slight variance in where the stiffness is within the shaft but as a whole on an ei graph very very similar in terms of profile now cut to 2023 and we have a newly released tour advf and this is going to be a little bit of unchartered territory for graphite design because this shaft as a whole is much stiffer in the handle middle there's actually a bump of stiffness before the tip and then into a stiffer tip section and once again the idea here was to kind of help try to combat the faster swing speeds and aggressive transitions of modern day players so this shaft, from my understanding, is going to be a lot more comparable to, say, a Ventus Black, for example, than anything that graphic design has done in the past in the Tour AD lineup. So, ideally, this is going to give us a little bit lower launching and spinning characteristics, but hopefully also give us the same quality and feel that graphic design is really known for. Now, in terms of how we're gonna go about our testing and the shafts we have today. So first and foremost, we're really just gonna take all three of these shafts and we're going to hit some shots with them. And I'm gonna to try to give you guys my best insights as far as feel, performance, spin, launch, anything that you could really think of you'd be looking for in a shaft i'm going to try to kind of give you guys my commentary on it in terms of specs we have the di xc and vf all shafted up at 44 and a quarter inches in a tailor-made stealth 2 plus 9 degree head at 9.75 degrees of loft they are all the 7tx variants of their given shaft and all un tip now you might be wondering why have i moved into the tailor-made stealth 2 plus from my tsr3 and long story short it's just giving me a little bit of a different launch window and i'm also finding it a hair easier to turn over on a consistent basis so that is why we are there as a whole should be a very fun test i've always been a very big fan of graphite design so i'm pumped to get after it let's head out to the golf course and get to testing right guys so we're going to go ahead and start off with the tour addi then we'll move up into the xc and then into the vf so tour addi advertised as your high launch low spin golf shaft interesting how that works uh, i'm not really sure how the heck something can be high launch and low spin the only theory is that any kick the shaft is having is helping you hit it higher on the face and because of that you're above the center of gravity and so it's going to come out with a little bit lower spin we got the familiar orange on the shaft looks great feels like i got uh, like a special lightsaber in my hands quite frankly all right, well, high launch, low spin right there. High in the face, 163 ball, 149 launch, 2000 spin. That was not shaft. That was unfortunately the Indian shooting the arrow right there. 
Once again, a little high in the face. 163, 13.7 launch, 1900 spin, 293 carry. What you're going to notice with GC Quad in terms of carry is when that spin gets really low, it tends to overemphasize carry. So probably not 293, probably closer to like 278. 280 carry on one like that but i mean in terms of feel it's a pretty familiar blue board feeling profile it's smooth but what's nice about the di and why i think it's really stood the test of time is because it feels like you can go after this and you're not losing the shaft Kind of a low draw right there. 166, 10 to launch, 2600 spin. But with that being said, like I mentioned how it's smooth, but you don't feel like you're losing it. You do understand why they've introduced new profiles like the XC, like the VF, because on a lot of these shots, although I don't feel like I'm losing it, when I get to impact, it's not maybe the most consistent feeling just because there is a little bit more kick throughout the shaft, if that makes sense. So like for me, I've hit a couple high and then that went a little bit lower on the face. But then you hit one like that, and you're like, damn. 165, 12 launch, 2200 spin, tight draw. I mean, very solid numbers. Oh yeah. 166, 12 launch, 2400, 294 carry. It's one of those shafts though, where for me at least, once I feel like I've hit it a few times and I start to get dialed in with it, it's just so good. I mean, it's so good. You understand why Hideki has been playing these for, you know, 10 years now. I mean, it's just a great shaft. No other way around it. Push that a little bit out to the right. But 166, 13 launch, 2100 spin. I mean, it's tough to sit here and characterize a shaft as high launch, low spin, but based on the numbers, based on what I'm seeing, it does seem like it's decently close to that, if you will. We'll go a couple more with the DI and then we'll move up into the XC. Yeah, I mean, once you get dialed in with this thing, it's just consistent. 167, 12 launch, 2450 spin, a little bit higher spin. I caught that slightly low on the face. 293 carry. And that's a pretty good one to finish it off because that's just doing what this shaft does. High launch, low spin. 164, 14 6 launch, 2300 spin, 298 carry. I think with the Tour ADDI, for me personally, if I was going to play this in a driver, it would probably have to be like an 8X or an 8TX just because there is a little bit of looseness. Like you do understand why people have moved on to stiffer profiles because although I do really like this, there definitely is a hair of looseness. I mean, you can definitely tell that that exists with this shaft. So let's go ahead and move up into the XC. Right, so now Tour ADDI. XC paint scheme a little bit different we got black into gray on the bottom very cool looking almost feels just like it goes very well with this driver we got a stealth 2 plus this thing's blacked out it looks pretty cool now in terms of just waggling it you can definitely feel a little bit of softness in the handle but as you kind of move up into the tip section it does feel maybe a hair more stable just waggling it All right, a little bit of a cut there. I haven't seen that today. 166, 11.7 launch, 2764 spin, and 286 carry. Definitely different feeling from the DI. But there's a better one. Just needed to get used to it a little bit. 166, 292, 11.6 launch, 2475 spin. So with this XC, to me, it just feels a little bit tighter in the mid and tip section, kind of as advertised. But in the butt section, I'm going to be honest, I think I prefer the feel of the DI a little bit more. I know we've only hit two shots, but... 166, 23, 29, spin, 12, 4, launch, 296, carry. In terms of consistency, in terms of how this feels through impact, just feels tighter. And that's a good example of what I mean. That was healed a little bit, but it went pretty much dead straight. 165 ball, 287 carry, 11 launch, 2539 spin. So on a miss, still decent ball speed, not super high spin. And in terms of accuracy, pretty much dead straight. And yet another miss right there. Again, low heel, 164 ball, 97 launch, 2900 spin, 276 carry. And although that's a drop in numbers, I mean, that's something that you probably expect with as big a miss as that was. But because of the rigidity here in the midsection and the tip section, it just doesn't feel like I'm going to miss it nearly as badly as the DI. Now, I don't feel like it's inaccurate. I do feel like I can miss with that and I'm still going to keep it in play. But the way I would describe this is just a little bit tighter. It just feels a little bit more accurate in terms of misses for sure. 
pushed it a little 167 12 9 launch 25 59 spin 295 carry i mean numbers wise they really aren't crazy different i just think it's that feel and that's what's cool about graphite design you know you got all these different shafts that are very similar in profile but there's just slight variances in feel that's what i'm seeing i don't think there's a huge change in numbers here but clearly just a little bit more consistent i think in the mid and tip section and that's a good one to end on. 168, it says 288 carry. I might've caught it a hair low on the face. 10-9 launch, 2740 spin. I mean, yeah, it's a good shaft. I think, to be honest, in terms of what I would play, I actually think a DI-8X or 8TX would be really nice in a driver. I think you would get a little bit more of that rigidity just because it's heavier, but I do prefer the handle of the DI, if that makes sense. To me, it feels a little bit firmer. Moving up into the VF now. And this thing looks pretty sweet. Black and red, a VF. I know it stands for Victory Force, but it almost feels like uh, we got Darth Vader's lightsaber in this driver right here. Again, I mean, you gotta comment on it. Graphite design always kills it with the designs, with the colors. Whenever you see somebody gaming a graphite design, you just, you know they're a baller. Now just waggling this feels much stiffer throughout. In the handle section, most definitely. It, this, to me, just waggling it. We'll see how it goes when we actually hit it, but it almost feels like the handle stiffness of the DI with the mid and tip section of the XC, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, dude. 167, 295, 11.4 launch, 2300 spin. Feel-wise, it's just very tight feeling there's really no other way to put it like i mentioned literally by just waggling it i mean it just feels like the handle stiffness of the di with the mid and dip section of the xc one shot in i mean damn and miss that one there kind of a little bit of a higher cut 165 ball 296 carry 2289 spin 135 launch but to me like if you're a ventus black player just right off the bat this is going to be something that's right up your alley it, it feels heavier too it just feels like there's a little bit more weight throughout the entirety of the shaft clearly lower launching and spinning 10-1 launch 167 ball 25 24 spin 289 carry that spin was a little bit higher just because of the contact point on the face slightly low but i mean very clearly lower launching and yeah i mean i've only hit three shots but just on those three shots this to me is a winner i mean this is going to be something that we're going to see in a lot of tour bags just because it's going to hold up the high speeds i mean pretty simple like I towed that and it just didn't gear off. 167, 11, four launch, 24, 24 spin, 294 carry. This thing's really good. This is really good. Like I can give this a lot and it's just not, it's just not getting up. 10-2 launch, 167, 287 carry, 2775 spin. Spin was high there, but again, I mean, it's just high because I'm wearing hitting it on the face. It's not due to the shaft, but I think the biggest thing that we're seeing is easily a degree less of launch, maybe one and a half. I mean, it's surprisingly lower launching, but it feels great. I mean, it really does. It just feels like the DI is very smooth, but you can give it a little bit. This is very smooth, but you you can give it a lot if that makes sense <laughs> the accuracy is very impressive 168 298 carry 1900 spin 10 7 launch yeah this thing is a winner i mean there's just no other way to put it i'm really shocked at how much lower launching it is all right, that was about as toey as I could hit it. And it's like, that's gonna end up in the left rough, but it's not getting me in trouble. 168, 291 carry, 2140 spin, 10, eight launch. Yeah, man, this thing is, uh, it's pretty freaking good. I do wanna go back to the DI and hit a couple more with that, just to kind of gauge. But I mean, based on what I'm seeing right now, XC really just a little bit softer in the handle, stiffer in the mid and tip section. This thing is just very, very stout throughout. The DI, a little bit stiffer in the handle section. And then as you kind of get into the mid and tip section you definitely feel a little bit more kick yeah, i mean that's so much higher launching 12 6 166 290 26 59 spin i mean i'm two degrees higher launch angle and i'm 500 rpms higher spin of course there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy because of the range balls but that vf is like vastly different than what i think a lot of people think of as the majority of graphite design profiles 
a little bit low on the face. 12-4, 166, 25, 25 spin, 293 carry. I think I pretty much said it all. Back into the VF. Ooh, baby. I'm just like to that point where I'm just like excited to hit this, which is a, a fun feeling. Little cut. 165, 294, 11-9 launch, 23-10 spin. I just missed that a little bit. There it is. 10-3, 166, 289, 23-50. Oh yeah. 9-9, nine, nine, 166, 287, 18, 15. I mean, it's low launch, low spin. There's no other way around it. All right, so back to the VF, but what I've actually done with this is I've taken the loft and I've added a little bit. So hopefully we can get a little bit more launch out of it because at like nine and three quarters, it was just a little bit too low for me. Dude, that is so effing good. 165, 293, 13.3, 2400. The more I hit this, and although I was more like thinking an 8TX DI would be a better driver shaft option, I think this would be awesome with just a little bit more loft. Little toey draw. But I mean, that's gonna end up in the left rough. There's just nothing wrong with that. 167 ball. I mean, that's quick. 13 3 launch, 2000 spin. I don't know, guys. I'm thinking maybe this VF, a little bit higher loft is gonna be the one for me. All right guys, so let's go ahead and just kind of go over our testing and how everything went with the graphite design shaft. So I feel like I pretty much covered all of my thoughts when I was testing the shafts, but quick summary, starting with Tour ADDI, really really solid shaft and you understand why it stood the test of time to me really feels quite reminiscent of like a diamana tb just that sort of smooth blue board profile but at the same time you do feel like you can give the shaft a little bit and it doesn't give out so i really like it i think that it's possible it could work for me probably not in the 7tx flex but more than likely in like an 8tx flex in the driver but yeah Really, really good shaft. In terms of Tour ADXC, what's funny about this shaft is you kind of want to think of it a little bit more as a whiteboard profile, but to me, it doesn't feel nearly as stout as a true whiteboard. Like you get a little bit of the handle softness, but then there's more rigidity in the middle and tip sections, but it just doesn't feel boardy. I don't know if that makes sense. It really just feels like when you pull on the handle, you can put a lot of speed into the shaft because of how stiff it is in the mid and tip section. It doesn't give way in terms of launch and spin. So you aren't like launching it way too high and spinning it way too much. It's a really good shaft. It's tough because I don't know if I'm over the moon about the handle softness, but at the same time, like the more I hit it, the more I kind of liked it. So that's the thing about like graphite design shafts is with certain companies, I would say the majority of graphite shaft companies, there's always one shaft in the lineup or one shaft within a family within the lineup where you're kind of like, yeah, I don't like this. Like, mm, no way, like this isn't gonna work. With graphite design, legitimately, I never feel like I'm that far off. Like, I feel like I could probably play any shaft in the lineup, and as long as I get the weight and flex right, I'm gonna have no real issues with it. So it's kind of something that makes graphite design really unique, at least from my perspective. And like, in terms of the XC, I do really feel like I could play it if I spent more time with it. I just don't know if I'm completely in love with it it's just one of those things where it's gonna kind of take more testing um i'm just i'm not 100 percent sure yet but that said that's kind of how i feel about the xc in terms of the vf this thing is really good honestly to me first and foremost it was the right direction for graphite design i think that they needed to introduce something that was a little bit more stout throughout and that is going to hold up to higher speeds and faster swingers more aggressive transition players better because that's not something that they've really ever had in the lineup and in order to get a graphite design to work for that type of player in the past you really would have needed to go up in weights or flex and with the vf i really feel like i could play this in a 7tx and have no issues in comparison to maybe having to play a DI in an 8TX, if that makes sense. So this is a really good shaft. I think if you're a Ventus Black player, you're somebody who 
maybe is traditionally more of a whiteboard style player, but you want to get into graphite design, this is going to be an awesome starting point. I really do think it's going to be uber successful on the PGA Tour into 2024. I know we're not seeing a ton of it quite yet. Obviously, Justin Thomas has put one in play, but a lot of that, it's really just due to the fact that guys are ending the season. They're not really wanting to change stuff. And I think as you move into the new season and guys are testing new equipment, new shafts, et cetera, et cetera, we're gonna see a lot of these in play. I'd be surprised, I'd be really surprised if we do not see a decent amount of these go into play because it's just good. It's just good, it's rigid, it's stable, but it really offers that smoothness that graphite design is known for. I'm a huge fan of it. I, I really gotta be honest, like not all the time am I kind of over the moon about a new shaft. The VF is one where I am very, 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 pumped about it. Now, in terms of which one I'm going to play, which one's going to work for me in my bag, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. Like I just mentioned, the thing about graphic design is I don't feel like I couldn't play any of these. I feel like I could easily play any of these shafts. I'm just not really sure which one's going to work best for me because they all feel great just in different ways. So I think for me, it's just going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more testing. And quite frankly, probably what I'm going to have to end up doing is playing all of these in a tournament, in different tournament rounds, and kind of just seeing which one I drive it the best with and kind of aligns with the rest of the equipment in my bag. That's probably going to be what I'm going to have to do. Unfortunately, I hate to do stuff like that, but that's really the only way for me to truly know which one is going to perform the best when it comes to actual like pressure filled situations. But as a whole, really, really awesome video. This was really fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram. And also, I'm curious, did you guys think that there was one shaft that I really liked? Maybe I reacted to in a way where you're like, oh, this one is definitely the one he should be using or maybe you heard the numbers I was giving you guys and you thought oh wow that's really good I don't know because sometimes when I go back and look at the footage I miss certain things and I'm curious to see if maybe you guys caught something I didn't and you think that there is one shaft that really stood out amongst the others at least for performance in my game if there was let me know in the comments let me know which one you thought worked best for me but yeah if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and clicking that notification bell so you are notified anytime that we post a new video. Additionally, go ahead and follow us on our other social media channels. Always some awesome content and giveaways on those channels as well. This was a fun one. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.